everybody. Uh, welcome to Dinners with Donna. I am Donna. Um, I cook every other Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern right here on my YouTube channel. So to everyone who's here, welcome in and thank you for being here. Um, today we're going to be making some summer salads, which was a viewer request, which I thought, what a great idea. Um, because now I don't have to really cook too terribly much today. We're going to be assembling a lot and chopping a lot. But um, they're only cooking two things, a steak and some sweet potatoes. So it's going to be really fun. Um, but we have a whole host of salads from all over the globe. So we'll be visiting all parts of the world in our salad journey today. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you guys, I want to know, is the audio OK? Can you see me OK? I just want to make sure, because Richard and I are flying solo now. So we want to make sure we're getting back in the groove and everything's OK. So if everything's good, give us a thumbs up in the chat. All right. Also, I just want to thank everyone again for making our uh, birthday fundraiser a huge success. Uh, our total raised in the end was $12,327. Thanks to all of you, not to me, you guys did it. So thank you so much. You made two wishes come true for two critically ill children and their families. Uh, so thank you so much, and thank you on behalf of Give Kids the World. We appreciate you so much. And congratulations, too, to our giveaway winners. Um, speaking of that, I'm still waiting to hear back from two of you, uh, Mary Simon and Doreen Bellflower. If you could contact me on any of my social media platforms, you've won prizes. So I want to hook you up with what you got coming to you. So <laughs> message me, and I'll take care of you. Um, but I did send the other three prize packages out. And I hope you guys love what you got. Um, anyhow, um, should we do a chat check? Sure. Let's do a chat check. Because we're not as chaotic as a marathon stream. So we can go a little bit smoother this time. <laughs> Are we getting thumbs up for hearing and everything? I think the echo is fixed now. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Got Sarah. Hello, she Sarah. She was the first. Who? She was the first. Oh, Sarah, Sarah the first. Well, there you go. Welcome in. Noelle Ash. Hi, Noelle. Marilyn. Barkowitz. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Marilyn. Thank you for being here. Vicky for real. Hi, Vicky. Craig's Robotics. Hey, Craig's Robotics family. Welcome in. Stacy from Live in the Match. Stacy, welcome in. So glad you're here. WDW Max. Hey, Max. Mike Beachman. Hi, Mike. Welcome in. Nicole D. Disney. Hi, Nicole. Missy you. Hey, how are you? Andronima Sean. Hi, Andronima Sean. Paul Eichenlob. Paul, I'm going to talk about you in just a second. <laughs> LSU mom. Emily, oh my goodness. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Stephanie Danielle. Hello, Stephanie. Welcome in. Annette. Hi, Annette. Park Hoppers. Hey, Park Hoppers. Jennifer Piccolo. Jen. Hi, Jen and Tony. Zippity doo dug. I'm not gonna sing it like that. Zippity doo dug. <laughs> Hi, Doug. Okay. ALJ. Hi, ALJ. Tasha Rogers. Tasha, welcome in. Debbie Bernfeld. Hi, Debbie. Karen M. Hi, Karen M. Welcome in. Doodle Mom. Hi, Doodle Mom. Yvonne G. Hi, Yvonne. Good to see you. Roxanne Simpson. Hi, Roxanne. Jean G. Jr. Hi, Jean. Margie and Herschel Linney. Hey, Margie and Herschel. I hope you're both doing well. Jennifer Caruso. Hi, Jennifer. Diane Loves Disney. Hi, Diane. Janie B. Janie, welcome in. UK Disney, Keith and Mandy. Keith and Mandy, it's always a treat when you're in my stream. Thank you so much for joining all the way from the UK. I appreciate you guys. Tiki Shannon. Hi, Tiki Shannon. Long time no see. Victoria Ward. Victoria, hello. Debbie Thurnet. Thunert. <laughs> yeah. Debbie? Debbie. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Sorry that we butchered your last name. Tanya J. Hi, Tanya. Tennessee Bear. Hey, Tim. Welcome in. Kathy H. Hey, Kathy. Crystal K. Hi, Crystal. Billy Zudo. Hello. Zudo or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Happy's Haunt. Oh, hi, Nicole. Simba 2. 
Matt, hello. Stephen K. Stephen, welcome in. Mark Langenkamp. Oh, Mark, hello. Um, I think that's Is he caught up? Mickey Travels. <gasps> Mickey Travels. Hi there. Thank you so much for joining us. This show should be right up your alley. We're making some really good stuff today. Tommy Longnecker. <laughs> Hi, Tommy. I have to scroll to find the new ones. <laughs> Monorail Molly. Hi, Molly. Welcome in. It's Joey's World. Hey, Lisa, Keith, and Joey. So glad you're here. Monarch Moments. Hi, Garrett, Michelle, Hannah, and Gabe. You guys are awesome. That's it for now. All right, that's it for now. Okay, so I said I was going to speak about Paul, and I had told you guys about the... Um, cutting boards that he uh, sent to me. They're more like butcher blocks. They're really um, hefty, but that's a good thing because then you, your knives don't slip and everything. So here is the small one. This is a small one, but look how thick it is. <laughs> and it's gorgeous. I seasoned it like you told me to with the, um, I washed it down with um, some soap and water, dried it off, and then I uh, seasoned it with the mineral oil, Paul. So it's looking really good. I'm excited to use it today. And thank you so much for sending these to me. What a, what a treat and so generous. Thank you so much. So we're going to be using Paul's cutting boards today. Um, I think that's all the announcements I had, right? Oh, Jeff, how could he miss you? Hello, Jeff. Welcome in. Shame on you, Richard. <laughs> oh, Chris. Hello. Welcome in. Okay. So, we are going to start with something that they call a salad, but is really a dessert. So, it's an ambrosia salad, and Jeff from Dessert Dream, like, flipped when I made this at Easter time. Um, so, I thought when I was doing a salad show, and I'm like, I covered, like, an appetizer salad and a couple of entree salads, a side dish salad, all that kind of thing. And I'm like, what I got to round this meal out somehow, and I'm like, I'll make a dessert salad. I'm like, ambrosia. Everyone loves it, so it's really, really good. Chop away. All right, I will be chopping away. Um, so what I do, actually, with my ambrosia that makes it a little bit unique is I combine two of my favorite recipes. One is called the best ambrosia from Mom on Time Out site. The other one is simply called Easter Fluff, <laughs> three-minute Easter Fluff. And that one is from, doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't know where this one came from. Oh, also Mom on Time Out. Well, where did this one come from? I think it, they both came from Mom on Time Out. Yep, they're both from Mom on Time Out. So thank you, Mom on Time Out, for these awesome recipes that I've mishmashed together to combine into one cohesive dish that I like to call my ambrosia. Um, but really, you can make it your own and throw things in there that you like. I'm making it this way. And Jeff from Dizard Dream, if you're listening, there will be leftovers. So hit me up and I'll hook you up with some ambrosia. So the Easter fluff um, is where it gets interesting. Um, so I'm going to start with the traditional ambrosia recipe. And then we're going to go to the Easter fluff. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Um, all, this is no bake, no cook, nothing. Um, this is literally, once I stop yakking, will, will take us like five minutes. <laughs> but um, we're going to need an eight, it, it, both recipes call for an eight ounce um, container of Cool Whip uh, Thawed, which I already did. I've got that ready. We're going to need um, some, do I need sour cream? No, no sour cream in mine. Um, we are going to put the mandarin oranges in from the traditional um, ambrosia salad. Uh, the 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple. But unlike the traditional ambrosia salad, I'm going to do what the Easter fluff says and not drain it. And you'll find out why in a little bit. Um, a jar of maraschino cherries, uh, drained, halved, and patted dry. I've already got those ready to go. Um, a cup of sweetened coconut flakes. Uh, two cups of miniature marshmallows. And I always use the um, pastel colored ones just because it gives it some color and it's fun. And when I do make it at Easter time, which is traditionally when I make it, I usually make it for the holidays because um, it's it's really sweet. But um, I usually um, use the colored marshmallows because you could use regular white ones if you want to. 
I like the colored ones. It just makes it more fun and festive. Um, and then, oh, this is optional. Three quarters cup of um, nuts of your choice. I'm using chopped pecans today, but you could use walnuts, cashews, almonds, whatever you like, macadamia nuts, any of that. So now back to the Easter fluff recipe. And this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. But they top theirs with a peep. We're not going the peep route. We already have marshmallows in it. And I don't need a peep on there. <laughs> but we are going to use the package of instant vanilla pudding. Now make sure if you're doing this, you use instant and not the cook to serve. Um, because that needs extra time to chill. You have to cook it. You can't just dump it in your recipe and go. So instant vanilla pudding mix. Um, like I said, the crushed pineapple that we're not going to drain, but we are going to drain the mandarin oranges because we don't want too much liquid in there. Um, and then the colored marshmallows, sweetened coconut, and the nuts. So it's going to be pretty easy. So I'm going to go grab my ingredients. I'll meet y'all back here. And Richard, chat check while I'm doing that. Let's see. Hmm? Trisha, welcome in. I, I need like a a bowl, like a big bowl. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to use to mix this. And I think I'll use this because then I can store it in there too. All right. So I've got our big bowl. We're going to put everything in here. So we're going to mix the pudding mix and the um, crushed pineapple. And I'm going to grab everything from over here. We've got our coconut and we've got our pudding mix. And we've got our mandarin oranges, and we have our pineapple, and we have our chopped pecans. Triple A sparkles. Hi, AAA sparkles. Welcome in. We're making um, batouche later, so that's going to be a fun one. I'm sorry. Joni C. Hi, Joni. Welcome in. Okay, so I've got my spoon and then I also have my uh, cherries that I drained have patted dry and then I've got my cool whip so we're just going to go in with this and I'm sorry I don't know why I haven't like a stray hair that's itching under my eye but we're, we're going to make it work okay so here's our 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple okay and I got my garbage bowl ready to go today, guys. So I prepared today. Okay, so in goes the pineapple. And then we're going to mix in. Oh, wait, there's a little more there. You want to get all the pineapple in there. And then we're going to take our package of instant pudding mix, vanilla. And I've never tried using another flavor. Um, I don't know if you would want to try that. I don't know if banana, banana cream would work in this or coconut might. I don't know. Myra, oh, thank you for stopping by. Happy anniversary to you and Emilton. And I really hope you feel better soon. Hugs to you and hearts. And sit back and enjoy the show and take good care of you. Okay, so we're just mixing here. And you'll see, that's why you don't drain the pineapple because the liquid's going to activate the pudding mix. Lisa said, I wonder if cheesecake flavor would be good. Cheesecake might work, coconut cream. I mean, you, I, I don't think I'd use chocolate, um, but any, any, I think any light colored pudding would work. Okay, so now, boom, boom. I'm just making sure I'm folding. Uh, I go. I want to go in the right order. All right. So now we fold in the Cool Whip, marshmallows, and everything else, basically. Corey Hi, Corey. Welcome in. Nice to have you here. Okay. So we're going to put this whole container, and I use the extra creamy. Um, you can use light. You can use sugar free. But I don't know um, why you do that when you're putting all the sugar in here with the marshmallows and all that. It just seems kind of pointless at that point. If you're going to have the sugar, just go for it. <laughs> William, Hi, William. Myra, thank you. you are most welcome, Myra. Okay, so we're going to fold this in. 
I'm going to fold that in a little bit. And then we'll put the rest of everything in. I'm going to drain this can of mandarin oranges because um, I don't want any more liquid than I just already have in there. So I'll do that real quick. Okay. Hi, Julie. Good to have you here. Welcome in. Okay, so this is a 10 ounce can. That's how they come of the mandarin oranges. I think you can get smaller ones, but this is usually I use a 10 ounce can and I'm just using the can just in case there's any extra little bit of liquid, which is not bad. We just didn't want the main liquid in there. So there we go with that. And look, the cans fit inside of each other, so I can just throw one can away instead of two. Uh, this um, no, because we're not layering. It's basically, I don't know if you all have heard of, like, um, in the 50s and 60s, they had these jello-based salads and desserts uh, with cream or pudding like this, and they called them salads. Um, it's a retro kind of thing um and i don't exactly know why they call it a salad because it's not really that healthy it's really a dessert um but i looked up the history on it and i couldn't really find anything other than it's called a dessert salad and it's usually got fruit or cream or pudding in it so or all hey nathan what's up Oh, hello. Welcome in. Patricia I'm sorry. Patricia oh, hi, Patricia. And this is our dream. Hey, you're in time for the ambrosia, Jeffrey and Ange and Zach and Abby. Okay. I should have brought my scissors over. The uh, bag. Oh, there it goes. It didn't want to cooperate at first, but there we go. Okay, so now we've got our cherries, which we're going to gently fold in here. Okay, done. And we've got our coconut, which we're going to... Alex Gray is here. Hi, Alex. Well, it's good to have you here. And Christina G. Hi, Christina. Okay. That's enough coconut. I had about two cups in this bag, so I'm doing about half of that. And a couple of jumpers there. All right. And now for the best part, the marshmallows. And basically, it's just like a jump and go. Jump, fold, and chill. But I'm going to have Richard um, and I taste test it. Now I'm going to do this in little uh, batches because I didn't have a bowl big enough. Jeffrey Pop says, hi, Donna. Hi, Jeffrey Pop. Now, see, this goes to show you, I always have a bowl that's big enough. I'm going to get a bigger bowl and be right back. JL's here. Hey, JL, welcome in. I think this might be better. Let me see. Sorry for the noise. All my pans are going everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to use a bigger bowl to mix, and then we'll put the ambrosia back in here when we're done. Jennifer said, is it just me, or do the colored marshmallows have a different flavor? They're fruit-flavored, which also goes with the salad because, you know, it's got lots of fruit in it. Okay. So we're going to get most of this out. We have a $3 super chat from JL. Oh, JL. Said, That's have very you nice. Ever, have you checked out Princess Half Demon yet? I have not. I will have to do that, JL. CH is here. CH, welcome in. Good to see you. And Dad Resort TV One is here. Jerry, woo, welcome in. Okay. So as you can see, this bowl's perfect for storing it. You need a much bigger bowl for stirring it because you've got to stir it. Now, you usually do not do that, but I should have had the bigger bowl out first. 
Carol in Wonderland. So say hello. Hi, Carol. And Disney up, Boiler up. Hey, Brandy. Good to see you. Okay. And now we're just. 88. Oh, hi, Mike. We're just going to fold this, and you want to make sure everything gets incorporated well because you don't want just, you know, a, to bite into just Cool Whip or just pineapple or anything like that. That's why you just take your time. But this was really simple to throw together. You can see that. You have a new member, Danette and Anthony. Oh, Jeanette and Anthony, thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Welcome in. And Mary Kehoe is here. Mary! Oh, so good to see you. And Brigida okay. Anthony. Brigida, welcome in. Okay, so many wonderful friends here. So blessed with all of you. Thank you for being Brigida here. said, this one really reminds me of summer picnics. Yeah. This is great for a picnic, a potluck. Like I said, I make it at Easter time. It's very tropical. And I'm going to put it in this bowl. And I'm going to chill it. But we're going to try it because I've never tried it before we've chilled it. And I want to know if the chilling makes a huge difference or if it just basically just is a temperature thing. And as you can see, it fits great for storing in this mock and mock. Okay, I'm putting the bowl in front of my face. Sorry, guys. Okay. And like I said, if you have a potluck or something to go to and you want something easy and no, no fuss, no muss, this is your way to go. All right, I'm just going to rinse this off, and then um, we'll taste test. Well, you said we are blessed to have you cook and do awesome things. Oh, that's so kind. Thank you. And excuse the water noise, guys. I'm just rinsing my bowl because I may need this bowl again for another salad. And there was nothing, you know, raw or meat or anything in here. So we can just do a quick rinse and soap and dry it out. Oh, and my watch is talking. How funny is that? Okay. It's Stacy and Tommy's anniversary. I'm sorry. It's Stacy and Tommy's anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. I didn't know that. Happy anniversary, Tommy and Stacy. How many years is it? 18, I think. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, it's Myra and Emerton's 40th anniversary today. This was a popular day to get married, I guess. Jennifer said, this beats my grandmother's lime jello salad with shredded carrots and celery. <laughs> oh, that does not sound good, Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to empty also my um, garbage bowl because I kind of filled it up. See? It's already full. One recipe and it's full. All right. Put that there in case we need it. We might need to empty the trash for sure. Suzanne says hello. Hi, Suzanne. Alrighty. You ready to try this? Gonna get two spoons. Moment of truth. And see, we didn't cook a thing. And we've got something delicious to show for it. So see, you don't always have to cook and slave over a stove for something. Although this, I wouldn't consider this dinner. But. No. <laughs> Mmm, that's good. Mm hmm Now, <laughs> mm. I'm going to put uh, the lid on it, put it in the fridge. Then at the end of the show, we'll, we'll try it again and see how it is cold. Here's the lid. I was like, I know I left the lid around here somewhere. And look, my lid has a handle, so you can even carry it to your potluck. Off we go. Stephanie wants to know what kind of nuts did you use? I used pecans today. Okay. 
now we are one salad down, moving right along to our second one. Uh, this one's a fun one. Oops, almost dropped my spatula. This is a, now I've not tried this before, so we're making this together for the first time. Um, it is a Moroccan sweet potato salad. So what we get is uh, two and a half pounds of sweet potatoes uh, or yams, such as red garnet, peeled and cut into three quarter inch cubes. I already did that. Uh, five tablespoons of olive oil divided, salt and black pepper. Um, I'm gonna use my, my kosher salt and my pepper grinder. Uh, we're gonna juice some lemon. Uh, we need two and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Uh, we need a tablespoon of fresh orange juice plus half a teaspoon of orange zest. So we're gonna juice and zest our orange. We're gonna need a teaspoon of minced garlic, half a teaspoon of ground cumin. There's a lot in this, but I think it's gonna be delicious. Half a teaspoon of ground coriander, half a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. I'm leaving out the eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne because we're not really big heat people especially Sam and Richard, so leaving that out. Half a cup of sliced almonds, um, toasted if you like. Quarter cup of dried cranberries. Some minced fresh parsley, where the cutting board comes into play. Three tablespoons of fresh min minced cilantro. And two tablespoons of fresh mint minced. So that is a laundry list of ingredients. So I'm really hoping that most of it's spices, so it's not really that bad. But I'm really hoping it tastes as good as it looks. Um, that's how I choose a lot of the recipes for this show. Um, I look at them, and I envision it in my head. I'm like, would that taste good? Sometimes I'm like, oh, no, that wouldn't go together. But this one sounded really interesting, and it's a warm salad, which we don't see too often. So um, I thought it would be really interesting to make. So we'll, we're going to go with that. So now we can go to stove cam for a minute. And I've got my uh, chunked up and try to do it in uniform shapes so that, you know, they all cook evenly. I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees. So we, we, we're ahead of the game a little bit. So I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil. I think it's like two or three tablespoons, it says. But I'm going to do that. Then we're going to salt and pepper them. And then I'm going to toss them. I'll get my food safe gloves to do that. And then we'll uh, put them in the oven. And then while we put them in the oven, we'll uh, do the chopping and all the other stuff that needs to be done. So we're going to salt these. some salt on the stove okay no matter what I do they jump the flakes of salt jump but that's okay stove is nice and clean and new so I just put the salt right back on the potatoes now we're peppering and I think that's the only spice we do to this at this point the rest of it's going to go into the dressing part of it. Okay. I'm going to leave my pepper over here because I may need it later. I'm going to get a um, pair of gloves so I don't have to clean my hands every five seconds. And then we will bake our sweet potatoes, which bake they say for approximately... 20 minutes. It says preheat oven to 425 degrees. Um, I put nonstick foil on my baking sheet, or you could spray it with Pam if you want to. Um, and then you place your potatoes, drizzle with two tablespoons, I'm sorry, of olive oil, season with salt and pepper, and toss to coat, which I'm going to do right now. Then uh, roast in the preheated oven until just tender, tossing halfway through. So 20 minutes total, 10 minutes, I'll go check them, toss them. Okay, there we go. 
just want to get Carlos out. is here. Carlos, welcome in. He says it's 88 degrees up there again. Oh, good gravy. Pamela Hoffman's here. Hey, Pamela, welcome in. Okay, so we've got these pretty well coated. I can see olive oil and salt and pepper. I'm like almost pretty much all of them except that one. Get that going. I'm persnickety that way. Okay, good. Vandal Rim's here. Hey, Vandal Rim, welcome in. Okay. So, I said you have the neatest kitchen gadgets. Where did you get your oil dispenser with the handle? Oh, I um, you can get that pretty much anywhere at Target. It's a Rachel Ray collection, um, uh, oil like dispenser, and I. I think I, I got mine on Zoo Lily, but you can get them at Target. I know Walmart has them. Anywhere they sell Rachel Ray products, I think um, maybe Bed Bath and Beyond and um, Home Goods might have it. But they come in all different colors. Yeah, they're really cool and really handy. Okay, so now we're going in. I'm going to put the timer on for 20 minutes, but I'm going to put the timer on my watch for 10. So I know to come back. So Siri, set timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Okay. So now, let's see. We need to juice, and we're going to need to chop. So we're going to juice first and then chop. And zest. We need to zest. So I need something to put my zest in. Okay, so I need, let's see, -dum -bum -bum, da -dum -dum -dum. two tablespoons of orange juice and a teaspoon of the zest. So I'm just going to zest here. And you don't want the white in, so you want to stop when it starts going there because you don't want that part in there. It's very bitter. And I'd say a teaspoon is pretty much going to be this whole orange. Janet and Anthony want to know what's your favorite salad. Oh, I have so many. I love my mom's um, Syrian potato salad. And I do love batouche, which we will be making, which is a Middle Eastern um, Lebanese or Syrian, like I am, um, salad that you make. And I'll explain it to you. Um, it's not really much different, except there's some different flavors in there from an American um garden salad. We do a couple of little different things to jazz it up, but yeah, that should be good. Okay, we're zested there. Now I'm going to juice. I need to get my knife. I'm going to put this aside. Oh yeah, I love it over here. Do, 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 do. I need two tablespoons. I got this beautiful orange. And I'm going to measure just because I don't want to, whoo, the spoon went flying. I don't want to um, overdo too much. So I'll put it aside in a little measure. Oh, and it appears someone's at the door. Or maybe someone's driving by. I'm not sure. Where'd that come from? Oh, a marshmallow? I see that lonely marshmallow sitting there. Richard needs to eat. He does. That's very true. Okay, so we're gonna... There we go. Perfect. Great. So it was basically the juice of an orange. Gave us enough, which is sad. Imagine how many oranges it takes to get orange juice. If it, I got two tablespoons out of one orange, my goodness. Okay. Then we need uh, two and a half tablespoons of, let's see, one tablespoon, two and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon. We got lemon peel. I always like to roll it a little bit, get the juices going, if it's hard. 
like my orange was soft, so I knew it would juice real easy. Okay. There we go. I'm going in. I'm getting a lot more juice, it seems, out of my little lemon than I did out of my big orange. Okay. So now I'm going to pour this and um, I'm going to do it by the sink just because um, I don't want the seeds, some seeds came out and I don't want to like put my hands all in there. So <laughs> I'm going to just kind of strain it while I'm pouring. So I'll just go measure. I'll be right back. Two and a half, it said. One. That is a seedy lemon. Two. And a half. Jen said, I need a juicer like that when I'm making larger recipes. My juice press is too tiny. Oh, yeah. This is great. It's an old-fashioned one like um, most grandmas had. Um, my husband actually found it at a yard sale for $3. <laughs> but um, you can see all the seeds that are in there. There were a bunch of seeds. So, okay. And we're going to be juicing again after. We need lemon for another recipe. So, I think we're good with the lemon. Yep, yep. I know. Well, they will be next time for sure. Because next time we're doing a um, salute to um, Lilo and Stitch. And I've got some really cool decorations. We're going to do a Hawaiian themed menu. Uh, so in two weeks, watch for that. Um, that's, I believe, Labor Day weekend too. So, Hi, Paul. Good to see you. All right. So now it says... Um, and uh, three tablespoons. Okay, so now we're going to get a bowl. And again, I'm going to use this big one because there's a lot of potatoes. So we're supposed to whisk in three tablespoons of olive oil, lemon juice, orange juice, orange zest, the garlic, cumin, coriander, paprika, cinnamon, ginger, and we're not using the cayenne, and then season with salt and pepper. So I gotta grab all my spices, which is good because then we're getting all the spices off my counter and out of the way. Out of the way, out of the way. Okay. I've got my measuring spoons over here. Okay. That's my juice spoon. This is gonna be my oil spoon. So I said three tablespoons, so in we go. That be one. Oops, a little bit more. Two, and come on. Three, there we go. Okay. Put this over here. We're dumping our juices and our zest in. So that's good. We'll get those out of the way too. Lemon juice. Orange juice. Orange zest. I want to get all that in there because that's really flavorful and good in there. You can see it even dyed the, it colored the inside of the, of the dish. That's funny. I'm going to put these in the dishwasher real fast. Get that out of the way. Out of the way, out of the way. Okay, so now we need, oh, the garlic. I forgot the garlic. And today, just for time purposes, I'm just using my minced garlic from the jar. I usually try to go fresh, but we're, we're going in with this today. So we need a clove. Just about a teaspoon. 
and you want to drain it against the side of the jar like that. Because you don't want the juice, you just want the garlic. All right, done. And that's more of a convenience thing. Please feel free to use fresh garlic if you have the time to peel it, chop it, and all that stuff. But we're making like six salads, so it's like, yeah. Okay, so we've got the garlic. Half a teaspoon of cumin. Here's our cumin. I'm just going to take the top off, and we need half a teaspoon, which I think is, that's a half a tablespoon. Here's the half a teaspoon right here. All right, so cumin. Done. Marvel K9 dog training. That's my mom. Hi, mom. I guess you didn't fix that name oh. yet, did you? <laughs> She said, can the dressing be made ahead of time and refrigerated? I mean, I sp this is a warm salad, Mom, so you want to make it at room temperature. So I just make it while the potatoes are cooking like I'm doing, and it should be good. So, guys, say hi to my mom. Um, we don't know what happened, but she got some weird name attached to her account, and we're not sure what happened. So that's my mom. Her name's Carol with an E. And, Richard, I'm going to need your help if you don't mind. This is a new coriander. I don't know if I can get this off myself or not. Okay, you get the coriander open. It's time to toss the potatoes. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Ooh. Alyssa and Neil, Disney family, are in the chat. Alyssa and Neil, who are they? No, oh. Hi, Alyssa and Neil. <laughs> Miss you guys. And hi to Lucas, too, if he's around. And Robbie. Samantha Lowe's in the chat. I don't even know a Samantha. Hi, Sam. Say hi to Grandma. Okay, so said, I tossed the... Neil. Yeehaw, Neil. That was for you. <laughs> okay. So I've uh, tossed these around, and now I'm going to put them in for the remainder of the time, which would be another. I'm going to put them in for like 12 because they look kind of hard still. So in they go. And I'm going to. Timer. Okay. Now, back to what we were doing. Coriander is open. We need to put a half a teaspoon of that in as well. That's my one teaspoon. That's the half a teaspoon. Okay, so coriander, which is actually the seed for cilantro. Um, and it doesn't smell like cilantro. It smells more, don't you think it smells like celery? Because it's made from the berry, not the actual cilantro once it uh, flowers. It smells like kind of like celery, I think. Okay. Roxanne said you can even buy frozen garlic. That's very easy. I have some, yeah. And I did. Oops. Hold on one second. I didn't want to use that because it was whole cloves and I didn't want to have to do a whole bunch of uh, fine chopping and stuff like that. But this is just as good. And it's, um, I, I, as long as you're not using it, um, like I'm using it in a warm salad, so it should be good. Okay, let's see. Where did I leave off? Oh, half a teaspoon of paprika. Yes. <laughs> you look like you had something to say. <laughs> Just reading. Okay. And I'm using, because we're using cumin today, I'm using smoked paprika. I wouldn't use sweet in this, but you can use regular uh, or smoked, I would say. That's my smoked paprika. And then... Uh, cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon. Here's our cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. There we go. This one ha is the most complicated salad because it has so many ingredients, but we're good. Uh, cinnamon, ground ginger, quarter teaspoon. Here's my ground ginger. Quarter teaspoon. That's a half. That's a quarter. Surfer girl says hello. Hi, Cherie. Welcome in. Good to have you here. Okay. And if you could turn the air down, I'm hot. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. Ground ginger. And now we're going to whisk and season with salt and pepper to taste. But I'm going to move all this out of the way, out of the way. Okay. Bam. We need a nice whisk. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Okay. Whisk away. So this is going to essentially be our dressing. And whisk, 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 because we want to emulsify this. It smells really good. And now we're going to salt and pepper. Now grab the pepper, and then we're going to taste and see if we need to add salt or pepper or anything else. Okay, I'm going to leave my pepper there. I don't think it's harming anything over there because we're going to need it again anyway. Okay. Also, at this point, for one of our recipes, we need to bring our flank steak up to room temperature. So I'm going to take it out of the fridge right now. And it's going to need to marinate, too, at room temperature for 20 minutes. So we're going to take it out now. And I'll put it over here. And um, Richard, can you come around for a minute? I want to know if you think this needs anything. Richard likes salt more than me, so... I trust him with the seasoning as far as if it's enough. Just a little bit like that. Mmm. It is good. Now remember, I, I would say it needs something sweet. But remember, we're adding sweet potatoes. So I think it's going to be really good. What do you think? Okay. Now we need to chop our herbs. I'm rinsing my whisk because I will definitely be using that again. And we're going to need, I think, cilantro, mint, and parsley for this. All right, we have, those are my radishes. There's that. And here's the mint. There we go. Perfect. Kathy Hollister here. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. All right. Now, we need how much of our herbs? A quarter, quarter cup of parsley, only three teaspoons of cilantro. Okay, so this is our parsley right here. And guys, I forgot to tell you, if you're making salads, I highly recommend investing in one of these salad spinners because I wash all my produce ahead of time for the show and I do that I try to do it when it comes home from the store I take the little stickers off have them washed and then if you put them in here you just press the thing down it's kind of fun too and it gets all the excess water out it's great for like herbs it's also great for um, lettuce um, all that kind of stuff I've even put berries in here and it, it worked really great so salad spinner yay so, Rena Ann Kalanicki. Rena? Rena Ann Kalanicki is here. Hi, Rena. Yes, hello. Welcome in. Okay, so I'm just kind of guesstimating here what a quarter cup of parsley would look like. I'm going to go like that. And we need how much cilantro did it say? Three tablespoons. So, again, I'm just going to. Disney World Castle says, sorry, I'm late, Donna. Hey, Donna, Just welcome in. From a baby shower. Oh, how wonderful. And Trisha Thayer is here. Oh, hi, Trisha. I think you said Trisha, but hello again. Okay. And then we need how much mint? Two tablespoons of mint. Okay. And Samantha Love is shouting out her stream for tomorrow. Did I say you could do that, Sam? No. <laughs> yeah, guys, Sam is um, having a stream tomorrow. We're going to see Air Supply 
Um, it's the 8 o'clock show at um, Epcot. So uh, check it out. And I believe she's, are you still raising money for your um, race? She's running for Give Kids the World in February. And she's trying to hit $500 um, for Give Kids the World. And I think she's over 300 if I'm not mistaken by now. Yeah. So I'm just going to. Oh. Hey. Christy Khan says hi. Hi, Christy. Welcome in. Donna, you're an absolute ray of sunshine to watch. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to rough chop, and then I always go like this, and this is where these great cutting boards that Paul got me are going to come in handy because I don't have to worry about my knives getting damaged. She's at $328. She's at $328, so she's less than $200 away, guys, from making that um, happen. So, Sam, if you want to put your link in there, she go did. ahead. She did. Hatbox Ghost is here. Hi, Hatbox Ghost. Welcome in. Said not much of a salad eater, but just wanted to say, Aww. stop and say hi. Bet you'd like our ambrosia, though. Do you like sweets? Because our ambrosia, top notch. And thank you for stopping by. I appreciate that. I know salads aren't everybody's jam. Okay, so see, I've got this. I've got to say, Paul. <laughs> These cutting boards work really well for chopping my herbs. I'm loving it. Noreen N. Hi, Noreen. Welcome in. Okay. We're just going to chop, 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 chop. Jan said, I would love this without the mint. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, see, that, and you, that's where I say you can take, like, the cilantro out if you want to. Yeah. Um, you don't need to for you, though, because there's only... A little bit in the whole salad. You don't like when there's like a ton of it. You don't mind a little bit. Do you? As long as I can't taste it, it's fine. Seriously. I'm giving him a look. It tastes like <laughs> soap. It does taste like soap to some people, and that's not your fault. That's just how it is. But Paul said that's why the thickness is there. Yep. That gives you torque. Okay, and I think my microphone just fell off, so I'm going to adjust that. Yeah, it's just swinging there. How lovely. I'm going to try going backwards. That way it stays in the pocket. There. It's not going to stay that way. Is it going to stay that way? Probably not. Joyce Carco said, hi, Donna. Hey, so Joyce. happy to see you're back in the park. Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's nice to be back, for sure. I love being with my friends and seeing all the bands, and it's a lot of fun. These are all our herbs for the salad. I'm just scraping them all together. And uh, some of them flew, so I'll just put them back. But here's what we're going to do next. It says, um, we did that. Okay, so then we're going to toss it with the dressing. When do you put the herbs in? Remove from the oven, pour into a bowl, and dressing gently toss with a rubber spatula. Okay, am I missing a second page here? Ah, okay. So we let it cool for five minutes after we toss it with the dressing. Then we put the herbs in. So we're good. And we've got less than a minute before the potatoes come out. So it should be good. Amanda and, Orlov says hello. Hi, Amanda. Welcome in. Okay. So yeah. So after the potatoes come out, they immediately go into the dressing. Um, and then we wait five minutes. So that cools. I'm guessing it would do something to the fresh herbs. Um, it would wilt them and maybe turn them black. I'm not sure. It's me, David T. is here. Oh, hi, David T. Welcome in. I'm going to re-whisk the um, dressing just to make sure it's mixed up real well. Ruby Mania, Nick says hello. Hi, Nick. Good to see you. And Surf Bump says hi. Hey, John. Welcome in. All right. I'm just re-whisking just to be, you know, safe. Make sure everything is mixed well. I rinsed my whisk really well. 
Because that paprika will turn everything red and orange. <laughs> okay. It's over. So now we're over here at the stove. And that's our last thing that's going in the stove on the oven. So we're done with the oven now. All right, so I'm going to gingerly, I might use a spatula. I'm going to use a big spatula to get my potatoes, my sweet potatoes, into the dressing. Because you can kind of scoop and go. Then we'll gently toss, wait five minutes. And then we'll start the next uh, process. I think the next thing we'll do um, while we're getting ready to um, for the potatoes to um, set or sit and cool down a little bit, we're going to um, make the marinade, I believe. That sounds like a plan for the steak. Because the steak has to marinate for at least 20 minutes um, at room temperature. So we will do that. Oops, I had a jumper. And this is interesting. I have never, I've had warm sweet potatoes, of course, but I've never um, had a warm sweet potato salad. Let me grab this one over here. There we go. Sam's at 386. Oh, yay. Whoever donated, thank you so much. Sam and I really appreciate that very much. Okay. I'm going to rinse this off. And then I'm going to, first I'll toss that. I'll use the spoon I used over here. Sari, so set timer for five minutes. Five minutes, counting down. Oh, wow, they soak up that dressing. This looks lovely. When do we put the cranberries in? That's my next question. Okay, guys, so here's what we're looking at. Sorry. I was doing it where I had clear counter space. And I think we're going to put the um, cranberries in at that point, too. Let me just read uh, cilantro. When do you put the cranberries in? Um, oh, I need to do this over. Siri, cancel timer. It's canceled. Thank you. Siri, set timer for two and a half minutes. Two minutes and three. Yeah, because we have to toss it again halfway through. So we're gonna do that, but I'm looking for where we put the cranberries in. Parsley, cilantro, mint. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't say. <laughs> what an odd thing, it does not say. So I'm gonna just, um, I'll add the cranberries in when we put the herbs in. That's the most strange thing I've ever seen, okay. Richard, read this recipe and tell me if you can see where it says to add the um, cranberries. Here's the steak one. We're going to make the steak recipe. Our steak salad that we're making is really yummy. It's a steak, uh, it's a grilled steak salad with peaches and um, blue cheese. And um, what else does it have in there? Uh, arugula. I forgot the base is arugula. Really good. Okay. I don't see cranberries anywhere on the recipe. Mm -hmm, but it's on the ingredients. Yeah. yeah. It, see, it didn't say. They tricked me. Okay. Thank you. We'll put that in the back because I'm pretty much done with that now. So, I'm just going to see what we need. We need a plastic bag. 
We need our vinegar, our garlic, brown sugar. I'll grab the brown sugar. And I'm gonna put these away for now. I know I'm gonna need them for, for the um, fatouche, but not yet. So I can get them out of the way. Sam is $104 away. $104 away to help Sam out, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, so it's two and a half minutes, so we're re-stirring this. And look, at it absorbed like all the dressing. Look at that, Richard. You can see. Pretty cool. Okay. So we set timer for two and a half minutes. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Counting down. Garlic. Vinegar. So for our steak marinade, um, we're going to need uh, garlic, uh, balsamic vinegar, brown sugar, uh, vegetable oil. I'm using olive oil. I always use olive oil. Uh, kosher salt, black pepper. And that's it for the marinade. Real simple. And we'll be making the steak so we don't have to go out on the hot uh, porch and slave over the black stone. We're just going to make it in my air fryer grill. So it's going to make it real easy. Okay, that's the right size. I'm going to use a gallon bag for that. Okay, so now I'm going to just put my flank steak. I'll use my food safe gloves, of course, and wash my hands. I'm going to put my flank steak in here so that when we mix the marinade, we'll just pour it in here and then we'll let it rest. Let's see. Mark said, I have a knife and a cow. I'll be right back. Ooh, <laughs> sounds good. Sam's at 422. Oh, boy, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for helping Sam out. That really means a lot to me. She loves running for Give Kids the World. So, as you can see, I got my food safe glove, steak, clean hand on the bag so we don't contaminate. But I'm still going to wash my hands just to be safe. Mud and Mascara Homestead. Who? Mud and Mascara Homestead. Oh, hi, Mud and Mascara Homestead. Welcome in. Glad you're here. Okay, so we shouldn't have much time left on the timer. Siri, how much time is left on the timer? The timer has about three seconds to go. Am I good or am I good? I knew it was about time. Okay. Janie D said, do you have a Mickey soap dispenser? I do. I do not in my kitchen, but I do in the guest bathroom and in um, all the bathrooms, pretty much, except Richard's, I think. So I'm just going to... Um, I don't use soap. What do you mean you don't use soap? What kind of person are you? Okay, so I'm just going to put the herbs in. Now I'm just going to... There we go. Then I'm going to grab the cranberries. And then we're supposed to eat this more. So. There we go. Okay, we're done with these. So I'm going to stir it up. And then we'll plate it up. And then Richard can take a picture. And we can try it. It's a beautiful salad. The craisins or the dried cranberry kind of look like uh, little jewels. Pretty. Okay. I'm going to put it in like this. 
this bowl. So we have goats. We'll put it in this bowl to serve. Okay, so I need your photography skills. I'm going to rinse out my bowl and my spoon. I may need it again. It looks good, don't you think, Richard? Yeah, it does smell very fresh. I know I'm going to need this bowl again. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone who donated for Sam. You guys are so amazing. Um, anytime we have an event or something like that for Good Kids the World or any other uh, charity, um, you guys always come through with flying colors. So thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of Sam and me, thank you. And Give Kids the World. You have no idea how much that means to them. They really appreciate it. Okay. You got the picture. So you ready to try it? Okay. Come on, Richie. Make sure you get cranberries, too. Oops. <laughs> of course that happens to me. She always does that. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. This reminds me of my mom's Syrian potato salad, but with sweet potatoes. Mmm. That's super duper good. I like it. I'd make that again. And I'm not even serious. You're not. But this would make an excellent side dish at Thanksgiving, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. I would eat this any day of the week. In fact, I'm going to have one more bite because it's that good. Mmm. Yummy. Okay. So Garrett said, Donna has a lot of good ideas. Michelle could be the how not to do one of Donna's recipes. <laughs> she could. I, I, I need to uh, talk to you about that. We need, we need to get cooking together, Michelle and I, I think. That would be awesome. All right, so now we're going to move on to our uh, peach and steak salad. Let's see. So we have our, our skirt steak. And then it says, doo -doo -doo. sorry, guys, for overreaching here. We've got, uh, we're going to combine the steak, the vinegar, the brown sugar, and just marinate it. So all we need, oh, we need a whole quarter cup. Okay. So I need a measure because that's a lot of vinegar. Rock and Robin is here. Hey, Glenn, welcome in. Okay. So I basically need to fill this. It is a quarter cup. Oh, wouldn't you know? I'm just shy. But they're not. I have a whole new one. <laughs> I'll go grab it. You turned the air down, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Wow, because it's hot. Maybe now that the sto uh, stove's off. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now we have a quarter cup. Okay, so just uh, balsamic vinegar, any brand you like. Um, I like Moderna. Um, that's where balsamic vinegar is from and is aged and stuff. So I've heard that's best stuff to use. So in that goes. And now we need how much brown sugar? We need a tablespoon, not terribly too much, so. Garrett said we would love it, Donna. Oh, that would be so much fun. I'd love that. We've got to make that happen. 
Okay, I need a tablespoon. He said, we need Donna to move in to help Michelle. <laughs> Poor Michelle. <laughs> Although, you know, a lot of the things she makes on Fun Food Fridays are, um, she's very brave. She makes things I, I normally would not make. And on top of that, she um, makes things and they turn out good. So, so, I mean, check them out, guys. They do a great Fun Food Fridays every Friday night, Monarch Moments. Uh, they're our friends on the West Coast. We love them. They're two adorable children, Hannah and Gabriel. And, um, yeah, check them out. They also stream uh, from Disneyland and all around, uh, I believe it's Northern California, right? Um, San Jose area. Correct me if I'm wrong, Garrett. Okay. Then we need more garlic. And, again, this is getting grilled, so. Okay. Jen said, peaches and steak sound like a winning combination. Mm hmm I saw that, and I thought, what a wonderful summer salad. And I know uh, Jennifer and Tony Piccolo have uh, a bunch of peaches from their tree in their yard, so it will be a great way to use them. So I'm just massaging the steak with the marinade, get it all incorporated, and the sugar everywhere and the garlic. I keep waiting for the mailman to bring some peaches from Jen and Tony. I know. I could use that. All right. So I'm going to put it over here, and it needs to marinate for about 20 to 30 minutes. Noreen said, what did you just add? I added um, a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar, a clove of minced garlic that I use for my jarred garlic because it's going out on the grill, and then um, a tablespoon of brown sugar. That's it. Real simple marinade. Now it's going to sit for 20 minutes, and we're going to do a... a Cucumber salad. 20 minutes. Starting now. Hey, how'd she do that? I didn't even have to ask her. Way to go, Siri. Okay. So the next one is, okay. Jerry, Pretty simple. Jerry85 yep. says hello. Hello. Welcome in. Glad you're here. All right. So this is a ginger garlic cucumber salad. It's refreshing. It's light. It's easy. It's another one of those you just don't need your stove. We're getting into easier territory here now. The hardest one we were making was the sweet potato salad because you had to roast the potatoes and it's a warm salad and all of that. But now we're into the cucumber salad. Easy peasy. All right, so we have uh, two seedless cucumbers, um, which are like the English cucumbers that you get wrapped in plastic wrap at the uh, grocery store. Um, I already cut mine and slice them because this is the only time consuming part in order to draw out the moisture you need to put them um thinly sliced and you can use a mandolin i didn't use it i just used i used my my granite stone knife that i love but um i just sliced it really really thin like maybe an eighth of an inch a sixteenth of an inch really thin and um put them in a colander with two tablespoons of salt toss it around so it's all coated let it sit for 20 minutes, and then it draws out all the moisture. Then you put it on paper towels to pat it dry and get all the rest of the moisture out that you can. And now I have them in the fridge. So those are done. Um, we need three green onions finely sliced. Siri keeps talking. Um, a tablespoon of finely minced cilantro. So we're going to get, get the cilantro out again, but only a little bit, Richard. Um, we need our uh, minced fresh ginger. So I'm going to use, I've got my fresh ginger here, and I'll show you how to peel that. I usually use the back of a spoon. Um, it usually, uh, a spoon works really well with that. I'll show you how I do it. Um, two and a half tablespoons of vegetable oil, a tablespoon of low-sodium soy sauce, and I get mine um, with no MSG. Um, Richard cannot have MSG, so I get the one without it. And then uh, two teaspoons of dark sesame oil and a teaspoon of sugar. So we slice the cucumbers very thinly, done. Uh, it says a mandolin works best, but if you have a really good kitchen knife and good knife skills, then you can do it the way I did it. Um, but if you're not comfortable, you can also use your food processor. Um, just make sure they don't get mushed. Then you sprinkle with the kosher salt, which I did. Toss so they are well coated, set the colander in the sink so they drain, and let stand 15 to 20 minutes. All that's done. 
We also did step number three, which is to lay the cucumber slices on a kitchen towel, pat to dry, place them in a large bowl, and add the green onions and cilantro. So that's where we're at now. We gotta get the green onions, we gotta get the cilantro. Brown sugar we're done with. Siri doesn't understand, but that's okay because she doesn't cook anyway. Maya Bianca says hi. Hello, welcome in. And Tommy from Living the Magic. Tommy, good to have you here. I miss you guys. Okay, we have mint and we need the cilantro, which is, I believe this is the cilantro. And Candy Mom is here. Hey, Cynthia. Yay. So many wonderful friends. I, I always am so blessed when you all are here. It makes me so happy. And Doreen Jones is here. Doreen, hi. So glad you're here. Okay, so how many did I say? I said, we're going to do a teaspoon of fresh ginger. We're going to do the garlic. Okay. So we of uh, the ginger, I need a spoon. I knew there was something I was forgetting over here. Okay. So we're just going to, um, I'm going to cut off, I don't need much. So I'm just going to cut off some of the ginger because I can save the rest for later. Tommy said, hey, hey, Donner. Hey, hey. Too. <laughs> All right. So this is so easy. Look, you just take your spoon. And look at that, it's coming right off. Did you know you could do that, Richard? I've never peeled ginger before. Well, now you know. And it doesn't, look, it doesn't take hardly any time at all to do that. And this should be more than enough. So I'm gonna stop here. And what I'm gonna do is put it through my garlic press. To mince it. It's a lot easier. Don't do that. Is it going to first or second? The first one. No. 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 That first one. Do you have to turn it on? And on again? Oh, I wasn't even on. <laughs> Just put it all in okay. the pocket. I did, but it keeps falling out. Yeah, because the pocket, pocket, oh wait, maybe now it'll stay. Hopefully it stays now. Okay, we'll try that. Our copper said that's a super easy way to peel ginger. Thank you, Dom. Oh, you're welcome. Let's see, I just need to find my garlic press, which is right here. There we go. So garlic press, also great for ginger. I got a ginger here. Oops. I'm just going to. I might need your muscle. I'll go get it. <laughs> it usually pushes right through. I'm, my upper body strength. If I can't do this, 150 people are going to be laughing at me. <laughs> no, they're not. There you go. There you go. There you go. You're much stronger than me. I can uh, get it from here. And then, yeah. I don't know why it's not working like it normally does. I usually push it right through. Maybe this ginger is the, uh, but it's mostly minced. So what I'm going to do is just run my knife through it real fast. But yeah, you have to be strong and have upper body strength, of which I don't have right now. Stacy said you used to force. Uh, yep, we'll use a force and Paul Eichenbaum's, um, Eichenbaum's um, cutting board. Doreen said, I'm ninja watching while making American chop suey. Oh my gosh. Do you guys know what American chop suey is? It's so yummy. It's basically like um, elbow macaroni with ground beef and a tomato sauce. It's a staple and they call it American chop suey in New England where Doreen and I are originally from. Okay, this is not mincing. I don't know why. 
This ginger's acting really funny. It's like in one big clump, but not to worry. So I had the fresh ginger and I wanted to show you how to peel it. But if you're having issues like I just did, or you don't want to mince your ginger, they have it in a jar. When in a pinch, go for it. And um, I'm going to use it today just because I don't know why my ginger usually uh, minces and goes right through that garlic press. So I'm not sure if it's the ginger I have or, or what, but I'm going to try doing it this way. That Disney works. vapors here. Hey, Chris, welcome in. Let's see. I can get more peeled here. T-Town Mary Ellen says, good, good evening. Hey, Mary Ellen. Welcome in. How are things in Oklahoma? Is it still hot there? I remember when I lived there, and one time the actual temperature was like 121 degrees. I was not happy. <laughs> baseball girl says, hi, friends. Hi, baseball girl. Good to have you here. And now this one's working better. But it's still stringy. I'm not used to it being stringy like this. There's something wrong with that ginger. It usually never does that. Of course, when I'm on a cooking show, it does that. But that's okay, because we have our backup, which is our minced ginger. Okay, so now we need how much mint? We need cilantro. Ginger, garlic. Oh, we don't need mint yet. We just need cilantro. We need a teaspoon. Green onions. I meant to grab green onions and I grabbed mint. Disney oh. Baker wants to know what you're making. I am making a um, cucumber, ginger, garlic salad. Mary Ellen said she thinks the really hot weather's behind them. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It gets really rough. Okay, so I'm going to get this. I'm going to get my green onions. And I don't think I'm going to use all this cilantro I got because I know Richard doesn't really like it much. So. Okay, green onions. It's 94 here. It feels like 104. Oh. That's here, here? Like where we are? Oh, yes. Did you have to tell me that? No wonder why I'm hot. <laughs> it's 74 in here. Okay. I'm going to cut the ends off. And it said how many green onions? Three. I was right. Three. So I'm going to said, where did you find the minced ginger? Ah. Uh, Okay, so it's at Target, but I think Publix might have it too in the Asian aisle. So just keep an eye out for it. And I bet you could get it at um, Whole Foods or on Amazon as well. In fact, I think they had to ship it to me. Because I don't think my local Target, yeah, they had to ship it. Baseball girl said she's Julie Young's daughter of Lauren. Oh, that's so nice. Well, welcome in. Great to have you here. We love Julie and all her kids. Okay, so I've got all that done. It didn't say to do the white, so I'm not going to do the white of the onion because that's kind of strong. And now it says, let's see. All right, so now we need to mix these with the cucumbers. Did I take them out already? I did. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so, oh, they even have more liquid. Look at that. They, I put had dried them and everything. They have even more liquid that came out of them. So I'm going to drain them. Wendy B said hi. She's been ninja hey, watching. Oh, ninja watching. We love our ninja watchers. That's awesome. Okay, so we're just going to put these herbs in here. Like so. 
more of the green onion than the cilantro because he doesn't like cilantro. And then we're going to just toss it around. I'll just use my ginger spoon because it has the flavor of the ginger on it already. And we're just mixing like so. And then we're going to make the dressing. So we mix uh, the sugar, the ginger, the garlic, the soy sauce in a small bowl. And then whisk in the sesame oil and the uh, vegetable oil. So I see a small bowl for that. It's this nice small one. Honora J said she's her fit hello. Hi, Honora. Welcome in. Just got home from work and you're making her hungry. Oh, yay. That's awesome. I didn't mean to make it hungry. <laughs> okay. How much ginger did I say I needed? A uh, teaspoon. Yeah. Janie B said, could you put the cukes in your salad spinner? You sure could. I didn't, when I was draining them, because you had to put the salt in there, but you sure could. I didn't even think of that. Okay, so we need the garlic. Just going in here. Drain, drain, drain. Okay, and then... We need our olive oil, two and, two and a half tablespoons, and then the soy sauce, which is in the fridge. Sesame oil, olive oil. Candy Mom wants you to send dessert over. Oh, cool. Okay. So here we go. We're going to get two and a half tablespoons of our oil, our olive oil. This is our oil measuring spoon. So one, two. I may need to refill this. Oops. Okay, and then I think it's just, now here's the thing that I wanted to tell you guys too. Um, sesame oil. It does not have a high smoke point, so this is like a flavoring oil. You don't want to like cook your in your wok with this. Always use an olive oil or a vegetable oil or something like that when you're making a stir fry or something like that. Don't use this as your base because it'll just whew, yeah, and you'll get a burnt taste, and that won't be good. It's me up. Boiler up is off to vacation Bible school. She said goodbye. Oh, have fun at VBS. Good luck to you, and good luck to the kids. And I hope everyone has a blessed time. All right. Where did I leave off? Sesame oil, two teaspoons. Uh, where's my teaspoon? Here it is. Two teaspoons. Sean Rogers is here. Hey, Sean, welcome in. All right, we got that. And then I need, and this is the sesame oil I use. I like the dark, and this called for dark. It has more flavor. One tablespoon. Okay. Rena said, said she's thinking about making chilled gazpacho. Ooh, chilled gazpacho. That sounds refreshing. All right. So now we need a tablespoon of this. And we need some sugar. Now go grab the sugar and put the soy sauce away. That away, I can put the ginger away. I need sugar, which is right here. We need a teaspoon. A whisk. Uh, my whisk is right here. There we go, guys. So this is our dressing. 
Yeah. Oh, it smells amazing. Okay, so here's what it whoops looks like. Can they see it? Yeah, kinda. Kinda sort of. Smell that. I know. It smells really good. And this would be really great to have if you're making a stir fry or something, which is great to make on a hot summer day too because stir fries are quick and easy and healthy. It's be a great side dish. You're just going to dump this all over your cucumbers. There we go. Like so. I'm going to put the lid on and just, um, I'm going to give it a stir, but I'm going to also put the lid on and toss it to coat. And then we're going to refrigerate them for a little bit. Actually, before we refrigerate them, let's try one. You want to try one? Mmm. Oh, this is good. It tastes even better after they marinate in the fridge a little bit. Uh -huh. I'm going to keep this over here in case I need it. That kind of tastes like salad dressing from Kobe. It does. Uh, we love Kobe. Um, steakhouse is kind of like a hibachi grill. It's kind of like Benihana's. But it's a local place here that we really like. I think they're all over the country, though, aren't they? I, I know so. they're a chain. So now they go back in the fridge. Sean says he loves your headband. Oh, thank you, Sean. And look at that. 20 minutes, and now we're ready for our steak. How'd that go? All right. So what I'm going to do now is um, put the oil back over here. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. We don't need the baking sheet anymore. And then I'll show you. I have my grill insert in my Ninja over here. Here we go. I don't know if you can see it or not. Here we go. But there it is. See? So we're going to grill the steak in here. I'm going to put it on grill for about 10 minutes. It's going to preheat. All right. Now. James Gerhardt says hi. Hello. Welcome in. Back to the steak salad. All right. So we marinated, heat the grill. Okay, so we're supposed to remove the steak from the bag now, um, getting excess marinade off, and then salt and pepper it. So we're going to do that while the grill's heating up. And I'm going to use a fork to take that out. Or maybe, hmm, yeah, support because I can throw it away. It smells really good. There we go. I'm going to use that to turn it over as well. And then I'm going to need to rinse the sink out because it had marinated in it. I'll just spray some stuff here a second. Oh, is that not open? 
Just so we can use the sink again. There we go. Okay, so we're going to salt and pepper both sides. And this is where a fork comes in handy so you don't have to put your gloves on or dirty your hand. You want to generously season it. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. It says to put olive oil on here, but there's olive oil from the um, and sesame oil and all kinds of stuff in there. And my grill is a non-stick grill, so I think we should be okay. But I guess I could do this and just spray it with some olive oil just to, uh, for good measure. Rosalie Dana says hello from Austin. Hi, Rosalie. Glad you're here. All right. So, steak's just going to go over here. It's, it's ready to uh, go in the gross preheating. Takes a while. I'm going to wipe down my chopping board because we're going to be cutting peaches and whatnot. I need to put some soap in here. And I'm just going to wash this off real quick. Garrett said he needs an olive oil spray bottle. Isn't that nifty? It's called an Evo. Um, and it does a really, really nice job. And you can adjust if it sprays a lot or a little bit, like the mist, like how it, the direction and angle and stuff it goes. Really cool. I love it. And I like the stainless steel one. They have ones that are plastic, which are nice because then you can see your oil level. But I like the stainless steel because it wipes down real easy and also it keeps the olive oil cool, which here in Florida is a tricky thing to do because your olive oil, if it, you want to keep it in a nice, cool, dark, Place and the stainless steel works well for that. All right. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay. Okay, I did all that. We're going to grill it. Okay, so now it says to make the dressing. But it didn't say to slice the words. I supposed to slice the peaches first. Let's see. Two ripe peaches, thinly sliced. We'll slice those in a minute. We'll make the we'll make the um dressing. So I'll wash this bowl out so we can make the dressing. Chad Ferran said hi from Chicago. Oh, hello, Chad. Welcome in. It's good to see you. All right. Garrett said he's adding it to his cart now. Oh, that's awesome, Garrett. You'll love it. Okay. So I washed and dried out my, the outside's a little wet still, but the inside's dry, of my little bowl. So we're going to make the dressing. The dressing has olive oil, lemon juice. Oh, we need our lemon juicer again. Lemon juice and season with salt and pepper. That's it. Olive oil, lemon juice, and salt and pepper. Okay, that seems a little bit simple, but we'll see. Where did I put my fruit bowl? It had the peaches and everything in it. Oh, thank you. I was looking here, and it was the sweet potatoes, and I'm like, wait a minute. All righty. So how much lemon juice do we need? One large lemon. Well, here we go. We're going in. And I'm going to use a strainer to pour this out so we don't get 
help and we don't get um, seeds because there was a lot of seeds in here and I'm not sure quite why but hey whatever I'm gonna get my little strainer there we go. and then pour it in here and then we'll get our olive oil and this is great for straining they do sell these juicers with um little like strainers on the end mine didn't come with that being that it's from like 1950 something and it was three bucks so i'm not complaining i just use my little strainer and get all the pulp and the cook out we may need that again so we'll see rinse it out and then our olive oil it's a quarter of a cup. There we go. Which again, that's a quarter of a cup. So I'm going to measure this out. Michelle Williams said she just got finished eating pierogies. Oh, I love pierogies. I'm going to try to make those on the stream sometime, but they're so time consuming. Pierogies are so good. Okay, olive oil, and then they just said salt and pepper, which to me is like, hmm, I don't know. We'll see. Then we'll whisk it. I mean, sometimes simple dressings are the best. I mean, I've done oil and vinegar before, just some oil and vinegar, and that's it. But you would think for a salad like this, they'd do something else but that's what it says in a small bowl which together olive oil lemon juice and season with salt and pepper we're going simple i can't believe they didn't put sugar or anything in here we should probably get two spoons and taste this i'm thinking it's going to be really sour It looks good. It looks like a vinaigrette. I mean, maybe it's supposed to be really sour. I don't know. All that lemon. It's actually not bad. Okay, they know what they're doing. All right. Dressings. I saw those. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> We found more jumpers. <laughs> so the dressing is now made. So now what we'll do is um, get our blue cheese out and we'll slice our two peaches, which I already washed. And you can buy a block of blue cheese, but for time purposes, I just got the already crumbled blue cheese like that. So. And steak and blue cheese, that's a classic combination. Okay, we got our hands full, hearts full here. Hi, hands full, hearts full. Welcome in. Okay, so now it's time to put the steak on. So we're going to open our grill. And we're going to put our steak on like so. We're going to get this to sizzle. And after five minutes, it's going to tell us to turn it, and we will. And then um, we'll let it rest. So now I'm going to get, I think, I'm, I'm thinking a serrated knife might work better on this, but let me try with this. But what I do, oh, this is cutting right through it. I cut all around like this. Be sure not to poke yourself with the tip. And then you just simply gently twist, and there's the, the pit, and it should pop right out. Yep. There you go. I had a little flesh, but not much. So now we'll just uh, do the same with the other one, and then we'll, we'll slice them, and they'll be ready for the salad. And if you have good ripe peaches like this, um, it shouldn't be a problem to do this. There we go. And sometimes you get a freestone peach, which means the this, this stone isn't as embedded. But this one's kind of embedded, so i got to give it a little bit of help. 
but it's okay. So it came right out. Just a little bit of the flesh came out, but not, not to worry. Now I'll get the arugula as well. We'll thinly slice our peaches. And I'm going to serve this on a um, plate. I think it would look pretty that way. Those aren't piccolo peaches, are they? They are not piccolo peaches. They're inferior peaches from Publix. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're good peaches. They're just not as good as piccolo peaches. The Muller man says he sees a hidden Mickey. A hidden Mickey. Oh, well, there you go. See, there's always a hidden Mickey. Just gotta look for it. And as you can see, this peach looks a little bit more ripe than the other one, but that's okay. You never know, you know, what you're gonna get sometimes. Mark said, now the peaches have a complex. You can see they're blushing. <laughs> That's funny. Want to try the peach? Is it good? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can concur. It is good. Jen said, we have four gallons of piccolo peaches. Well, bring them on down. If I knew they would have survived shipping, I would have sent some. Oh, thanks, Joni. Jen. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Jen. And Tony. I think it's a group effort. He's at the firehouse. Mm -hmm. Those peaches are really good. All right, so now I'm going to grab my arugula. Let's see. Glenn Castro says hello. Hi, Glenn. Good to see you. And hi to Verna as well. Okay, so it says to get a large serving bowl. Large serving bowl. Large serving bowl. I need a large serving bowl. Let's see. What can we use, Rich? I was going to use a plate, but that probably won't work. I'm thinking we mix the salad, like dress it, and then plate it on a plate. That'll work. Okay. So in a large serving bowl, arugula, peaches, feta, and steak. Yeah, I'm just going to mix the salad up and then plate it. And I'll put, I want to arrange the steak on top. Like I'm going to slice it on the bias after it rests and then put it on the top of the salad. Um, where's the arugula? <laughs> there. Here's the arugula. Oh, time to turn the steak. Oh, that looks beautiful. The grill marks on there are great. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to throw the arugula and how much arugula did it say i'm trying to read it the print on that is so small six cups oh that's plenty we'll just go for it and it's baby arugula that i ran through my salad spinner and rinse oh my goodness there's there's this globe like really scurrying across our backyard what is he doing he's getting in my bougainvilleas crazy crazy squirrel and I'm not going to put the peaches in here either. I'm making an executive decision. I'm going to, like, make it pretty. 
I'll dump the blue cheese in though. Hands full, heart full. Said, what kind of grill is that? It's a Ninja Foodi um, air fryer grill. So its essential function is as an air fryer, but it's also an, an indoor grill, which comes in really handy. Okay. So now I'm going to just uh, drizzle the dressing. It's a dressing drizzle. And then I'll grab some tongs. I'm not sure if I need, but I do need the, um, to make one more dressing. Okay. So I'm just going to gently toss it. Tongs. Sam said, I want some of this salad. Of course you do. It's good. And it's simple. Oops. Hmm, it tastes good. Okay, so here's the salad mix. Drop the mint leaf. <laughs> and I'm just gonna rinse my whisk because we're gonna need that, I think, for the fatouche dressing. Jen said she could eat the whole salad herself. <laughs> That's awesome. The steak has two minutes and. Um, Then it's gonna rest, but I'm gonna I'm gonna plate up a little bit of salad. And I'll put the rest aside um, so I can make the plate pretty. And then what I think I'll do is I'm gonna arrange some peaches around like so wendy b said she could make it with grilled chicken oh yes in fact one of our uh recipes we're making after the fatouche our last one is is a grilled chicken salad with berries and goat cheese so that that's gonna be yummy rena said can you substitute feta cheese for the blue cheese you certainly can or you could omit it if you'd like your salad, you can do it every once. So, see what I'm doing? I'm kind of making like a pretty sunburst there. And then um, I'll put the steak in the middle. Okay. I'm going to get a regular fork now because the steak is cooked so it can rest. No, we haven't had to replace the ice maker. What happened? Hands full, heart full said they have the same refrigerator and they had to replace the ice maker. Uh-oh. I hope that doesn't happen. We use ours a lot. Although I have to say, I haven't been really thrilled with that refrigerator. Um, the front of it, it got like weird marks where our um, magnets were. So I don't know what happened. It's it's for stainless steel. It's not very rugged. Kathy H said, "Can you grill the peaches?" You could if you wanted to, for sure. Okay, so we're gonna let the steak rest. But here it is. Isn't it beautiful? And for flank steak, I believe we want to cut against the grain. But I'll look that up. So, do you cut flank steak across or against the grain? Here's an answer from mamalovesfit.com. Flank steak yep, should always, I was right. always, always be cut against the grain. Yep, always, always, always be cut against the grain. I was, I was correct in my assumption there. Okay, so we're going to let that rest for a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this salad out of the way just for a minute while it's resting. And I will... Um, start on the next thing i'm gonna i think i'll use my gel board for a minute because i've got the peaches on the the wood one here 
So take this and put it aside. Rosalie said, can you shake the peaches and powdered sugar? I guess you could, but that would make it awfully sweet. But I mean, if that makes you happy, I would go for it. For me, that would be a little bit too much sugar. Okay. So I'm kind of using this big cutting board as my base because I don't want to have to move it to the sink because I don't have room in there for it right now. But while we're waiting for the steak to um, rest, Siri set timer for eight minutes. Eight minutes, counting down. We're going to get started on our fatouche. Now, fatouche is a Middle Eastern salad. It has, um, I'm sorry, that squirrel's really distracting me in our yard. So destructive. Anyway, um, it's a salad with all kinds of vegetables. I put radishes in mine. Um, it also has some um, interesting ingredients. We're using pita bread, and um, we're going to make basically like a crouton out of our pita bread. And we're gonna fry it on top of the stove. And then when it comes off, we're gonna season it with salt, pepper, and za'atar um, seasoning, which is a Middle Eastern spice. It contains some sumac, and it contains um, thyme, and a whole bunch of other things. It's got, let's see, I'll show you. You can get it at Trader Joe's. And I got mine at Trader Joe's. And it's got, um, Let's see, toasted sesame seeds, sumac, um, coriander, um, thyme, all kinds of stuff, salt. It's, it's a real great thing. You, I, can, I make za'atar chicken. I use it on a lot of things. You can brush your pita bread with olive oil and put some of this on it and toast it in the oven at like 350 for 10 minutes, and it makes this really nice like flatbread kind of thing. But, yeah, so good. So we're going to cut our pita bread, and I'm only going to use one, I think. Maybe I'll make two, then I can have pita chips. We'll see. Noreen asks what spice seasoning that is from Trader Joe's. Hmm? She want to know what seasoning that is. Oh, it's called za'atar? Can they see it? Yes. Yeah, it's called za'atar. And you can find it at any good um, international store, or Middle Eastern um, grocer. I'm just cutting these into, and like I said, they're going to be like little croutons. Now, my mom, my family, we never toasted them. This is a new thing for me, um, like for my generation. <laughs> Sparkle said you can mix it with olive oil and use it to dip bread and vegetables. You sure could if you have really good fresh pita. Um, unfortunately, we don't get very good fresh pita here, so um, this is a perfect use for it because it is a little bit hard. I think it was in the freezer or something because we don't. They, in our neighborhood, they don't sell a lot of pita bread for whatever reason, but um, you know, it is what it is. I don't know. Here, and JP try some. Says hello. Hello, welcome in. We're making um, the croutons uh, out of pita bread for our fetouche salad. That's good, but it's not fresh. And it's kind of like, I don't know. It's almost just thin to have not fresh pita bread. Didn't I just take one out? Maybe I didn't. I think I'll get a bowl. I'll use this. Jen said she just texted Tony and said they need to make this on Thursday. Yeah. So good. Okay. So I'll cut another one. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Here we go. Cut one more. And while this is going, I'm going to just heat my oil in the pan so that our pan's working for us. 
Do we have a larger one? Is this our largest one? I didn't think so. Yeah, I got it. That's not it either. Uh oh, it's way in the back. That should be in the front. That's always the one I go to. All right. So I got, I don't know, like two tablespoons maybe of um, olive oil in there. And we're going to heat it at medium high heat. Get it working for us. If I recall correctly, I don't know if my mom's still watching, but um, we used to just tear the bread. I like cutting it. What? That fell on the floor. What? What you're eating? Right here. I put it in there. That's a trash oh. bowl. I don't care. <laughs> I was trying to tell you with a nice to learn how to read hand gestures. <laughs> That's the garbage bowl. <laughs> oh, Richard. It tastes the same. <laughs> it tastes the same, he says. Oh my gosh, I can't even. Okay, so here's our, uh, you know, what's going to be our croutons for our fetouche salad. I cut them into little like squares. You can tear them like my mom used to do. I kind of think sometimes she did that to keep me busy. Because, um, yeah. But tearing's good too. Let's see how we do here. It's not quite there. I'll jack up the heat a little bit. Here's a clean one. Okay. And here's the thing if you want it little clip for it okay so let's see i'm gonna wait to go over the rest of the fatouche ingredients because um we want to finish the steak salad but i just thought this would be a good thing to do while the steak's resting okay and you can always test your oil out by putting one of these in here and if it sizzles see it's not sizzling because if you don't if it's not sizzling your bread will absorb the oil and then it'll be greasy and you don't want it greasy you want it nice and crispy and toasty okay i'm excited about the steak salad to be honest with you <laughs> i saw it and i was like oh we have to make this it was so easy too it didn't take hardly any time at all. The longest thing that we had to do was marinate the steak. It took less time to cook the steak than it did to marinate it. Oh, now I'm back full screen. <laughs> As I'm going over here. Evan Hutton says hi. Hi, hi Evan. Welcome in. Yeah, it's not sizzling. We're almost there. Like another minute, maybe. It's shimmering. The oil's shimmering. That's a good sign. Okay, I'm just going to put them in and see what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's sizzling now. I don't think you can hear it, but I can see it. I'm just going to crisp these up. And I'll take a, a little bit. So we'll let these go for a minute. And what I'm going to do now, since the steak is done, I'm going to flip this gel board over shake off the crumbs in the sink and we're gonna cut our steak and see if we cut into our steak too soon the juices would all come out and see this is after resting and it had juices come out so look at that you've got to let your meat rest it's very important 
Okay, I'm going to get my carving knife because you don't want to use your chef's knife on that. And then, Richard, if you wouldn't mind grabbing me a clean um, paper plate. And I'm going to get a carving knife. This will work. Now, remember, we want to cut against the grain, which is like this way. And look at that. It cuts like butter. Richard, you got to taste this. Oh, that marinade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So simple, but so delicious. Oh, I think Sam's coming for, I think she sees steak. Got a 1999 super chat from Wendy B. Oh, Wendy. Thank you so much. That's said, very kind. Said, oh, Donna, I hope. I ordered the ABC sweetener soy so sweetened soy sauce we recommend, and it's delicious. Isn't it I amazing? It. I love it. That stuff is amazing. Ben from PTV here. Ben, hi! I'm so glad you're here. Did you guys get your trees done yet? I know you guys are working really hard. The best part of this is I always save the little little bit of end like I did, and then Richard and I have a snack. Don't eat out of the trash bowl, she yelled at me. I will yell at you. That's just gross. Here. You want some steak? That's Sam. It's really good. Well, what do you think? Do you want to thank everybody that donated? Because you hit your goal. Did you know that? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I know she appreciates it more than you know. Okay, so this salad is all dressed. So all I have to do now is arrange the steak. Sam's like, I want the steak. I want it now. Our copper said that steak looks amazing. Thank you. Hard to believe it's from an indoor grill, right? Okay, Richard, you got to take a picture, and then, then you can eat it, Sam. And I'll move this steak out of the way. Oh, that's too big. I need to find a little container for the rest of the steak. Or are you guys going to eat it? <laughs> what kind of question was that? What kind of question was that? Okay. I forgot we got to toast the, um, we're toasting the bread. Some of it got a little bit overdone, but that's okay. I'm going to split. I think it might need a little, little, little spray of oil. I got too many things going in none of hands. Okay. There you go. There we go. Ben, ben said three trees at my house are lit for Christmas. That's amazing. Now Sherry and I have to get the fall decorations out for the tree. Perfect. That sounds great. Okay. And your mom said, nice seeing you, Sam. <laughs> and she ran away. And she ran away. Did she get steak? No, I think she's coming back. Oh. Space Mountain Dave Cantrell's here. Oh, hey, Dave. Welcome in. Okay, so this is pretty much almost done here. Turn it off. All right. So we'll let that sit for a second. You took the picture? Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's time to try the whole salad. And we're just going to need a small plate for the rest of the steak unless you to put on. So, well, I can just put it on here, I guess. You coming? Get a fork. Oh, I thought you had one. <laughs> okay. 
So I want to get a little bit of everything. It's a little piece of steak. Piece of steak. Get, did you get the blue cheese and the peach? Arugula. Oh man, that's money. Mm hmm. I'm gonna eat that for dinner every night. Mm, so good. Really good. Okay, I'll let you take this. I'm gonna season my bread mixture. Let's see. We can put the steak. Actually, we can put the potatoes in here, the sweet potatoes, and I can put them away. Oops. There we go. I don't need your help. I dropped the sweet potato. All right. I'll just put this over here for now. What, um, yeah. Oh, you, you didn't get this with potato, but that's okay. Okay. I'm just going to wash my cutting board and uh, put the peaches away. And then we'll season the croutons. No, don't eat on the floor. What's wrong with you? Okay. All right, I'm going to get the peaches and put them away. So that we can work on this that touche. I'm gonna put the peaches, the rest of the peaches in here. And then we can top our salad with them later. There we go. All right. You're too busy eating. <laughs> okay. I'll wash this board off. So now I'm going to take these croutons and I'm going to season them. And they're not that bad. They almost got burned like to a crisp, but they didn't. So we need some salt, some pepper. And some za'atar seasoning. That's my own little thing. I think this is almost empty. That's why it's falling over. All right. Here we go. We got add our, our za'atar from Trader Joe's. This stuff is so good, but I need more than a shaker to get in there and And you know, just toss this all together. And then we'll try one. So good. Mmm. So, so good. That was a good idea to put the zatar in there. Okay.
So now we will set this aside and start working on the fetouche. So this was our, that's going to top our fetouche. Now, we'll get our recipe out. And don't forget we have to try our ginger garlic pickles again at the end in the ambrosia. Okay, so for our fatouche, we need the knife to get out of my way. There, okay. We need a large head of romaine lettuce chopped. I saved myself some time and got some um, bagged, pre-washed, uh, chopped romaine that we're going to use and um, put it through the salad spinner. And then um, a ripe tomato sliced. I use cherry tomatoes and have them. I did that ahead of time. Um, we've got cucumbers that I already sliced and chopped, so they're going to go in there. Green pepper, again, I chopped. I have to slice the radishes, two green onions, and then a quarter cup of uh, fresh chopped parsley. So we're going to put the salad together. Well, actually, it says to make the dressing first. So the dressing has three tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of lemon juice, two garlic cloves, uh, pressed or grated, uh, a teaspoon of sumac, and that is a Middle Eastern spice, but it's also, um, it's cultivated also in Africa and Asia and North America. And it's a berry, it's a bush, um, and they take the berry off of the sumac uh, plant, I guess, and I'm not sure if it's called the sumac plant, but the spice is sumac. And the berries are dried and crushed, and then you have sumac. And it's like a red. Oh, you'll see. It's a red color. And then we're going to use one teaspoon of pomegranate molasses, also a staple in Middle Eastern cooking. You can find it at any Middle Eastern grocer or international aisle or on Amazon. Uh, a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of dried mint. I dried mine. My new oven has an air fryer function, so I just um, took fresh mint leaves a whole package of them that I got from the store and took the leaves off of the stems, threw the stems away, put it on the air fryer rack it gave me that came with the oven, and air fried it at 350 on the air fryer function for five minutes, and it came out perfect, and I just crushed it, so it's ready to go. And then salt and pepper. So we're going to mix this again. I'm going to get a bowl. And wipe out my bowl again. This bowl's getting a lot of use. It's a good dressing bowl. And we'll start. So I'll go grab my sumac and I will grab my pomegranate molasses. I will get a lemon, which we will zest. My sumac doesn't want to stand up. But this is how my sumac came. And um, it says here, sumac grows throughout the Middle East and parts of the, uh, and parts of Italy. The dark purple red berries are, are so dry or ground and have a fruity, astringent taste. So, yeah. There you go. It says it on the back of the package, too. So, there we go. Okay. So, I need... I didn't find my knife. Got you got know a $2 super chat from JL. Oh, JL. You don't have to Harry Potter is leaving HBO Max again. It's leaving? Oh, dear. JL, that's breaking news. Thank you for telling me that. That makes me sad. I love Harry Potter. Okay, I need another lemon. Because I used all the ones I had. So I got to go in the fridge and get another one. Candy Mom said she's still trying Disney's website to get reservation at Donald's. Oh, <laughs> Cynthia, you're funny. There's always the reservations at Donna's. Ask Richard. Yaddy's here. Hi, Yaddy. It's good to see you. Welcome in. Okay, so I'm going to juice this lemon. How much lemon does it say? I need help seeing. My eyes don't work well. 
Oh, because the recipe is right in here. Dressing. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Three tablespoons of olive oil. Fill it go in. Noreen said she didn't know you could eat sumac berries. Yes, they are edible. I've been eating them my whole life. Now, I wouldn't consume like a whole bag of soup, <laughs> but, but yeah, for spices, a, a teaspoon in the whole salad is fine, and it's not toxic or anything. It would just, if you eat too much of anything, it'll give you a stomach ache. Okay. W would you like this? Because it's going in the garbage bowl. Okay. <laughs> Jen said, I just remember I have a standing reservation for the hammock. Oh, I like that. Okay. So I said two. Yeah, Kellen had to show everybody the hammock. Oh, I know. Hammock's the best. Okay, I got a scene in there, so I'm getting it out. I should probably use my... I need a hand. I need you to come around the other way. Well, Okay. You really don't do gestures well, do you? I'm like, that way. Okay, I need to go this under here. I know, but that's not where I need it, do you? Okay, there we go. Okay, thank you. That's the last time I'm going to need you for that, and that's the last time we need the juicer. All right, and can I please have my olive oil? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I know. Zatar. One. Two. Three. Three tablespoons of olive oil. That's the last we're going to need of our olive oil tonight. So, yay. I've got to refill this. It's empty. That was it. I'm stealing a crouton, too. Mmm, so good. Crunchy. Okay. Lemon juice, olive oil, garlic. I'm excited that PTV has their Christmas stuff going up already. That makes me so happy. PTV brings the happy. Okay, now, and guys, if you like Christmas as much as I do, you can watch it year-round on PTV, Pepper Tree Villa. They're amazing people. They're some of my best friends in the whole entire world, and I love them. And they're on every Monday night at 9.30. But on their um, channel, they actually have a video of all their trees. So you can watch it anytime you want to. And believe me, I watch it a lot. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay, so we're going to use a teaspoon of the sumac. And I will show you what the sumac looks like. I'm not sure I understand. No, I don't think you would understand, Siri. Okay. So I'm going to see. That's what it looks like. Kind of a reddish purple kind of thing. Almost like a crushed beet kind of. I don't know. But that's one of my childhood memories. We use sumac in a lot of recipes. All right. That sumac's probably going to last me a lifetime. There's a lot of it there. Um, <laughs> Verna wants you to sing the PT3 song. Verna. Um, <laughs> you're funny. Maybe in a little bit. <laughs> Once we make the dressing, I'll sing it. Here's my pomegranate molasses. This is what it looks like. It's um, very thick. It's got the consistency of molasses, but it's made with pomegranate seeds. So that's why it... Um, has the name now see you can see it pouring out it's like a syrup almost but you can use this in so many applications in fact um if those of you watch uh food network those of you who watch food network bobby flay uses pomegranate molasses on chicken on his barbecue in sauces in marinades and dressings all the time so he he knows the goodness that is the pomegranate molasses and i've lived with this my whole life so I was lucky enough uh, to be born into it. 
Okay. There's that. Now we need our dry mint, half a teaspoon, and then our salt and pepper. Rana said her birthday is September 24th. Oh, well, happy early birthday. And see, here's the, the whole package of mint, the whole big package, only dried to that much. So that's why your dried spices are expensive. But they last longer than the fresh, so. But here we go. We're going in with a half teaspoon. And then while we're risking it, I'll sing you the Pepper Tree Villa song. And I think I'll save that mint for something else. And then salt and pepper. And then we'll whisk and we'll sing. Ben, are you still here to hear this ridiculousness that I'm about to sing? <laughs> but it's your song and it's done in with so much love. All right. Ready to whisk and sing. Here we go, guys. So that's our dressing. We're going to whisk it now. Okay. Pepper Tree Villa. Pepper Tree Villa. A pepper, a tree, and a villa make three. Pepper tree villa. Now, in fairness, when I, I came up with the song with Sam, there were three of them. Sherry hadn't come on board yet, so there's really four. There's four of them now. There were three. I said a villa makes three was Ben and Doug and Arnie, but now there's Sherry too. So. But there you have it. <laughs> For what it's worth. Okay, so that's the dressing. Really easy peasy. Ben said LOL. <laughs> Doug, <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> you guys should be here on karaoke night. That's something. Honora said you sound like Annette Funicello. Oh, well, thank you. I take that as a compliment. Thank you. As long as I don't sound like a howling dog, I'm happy. <laughs> okay, you ready, Richie? I'm taste right dressing. <laughs> Snap out of it, man. <laughs> okay. A little bit. Mm. Really good. And the pomegranate molasses, you, you, it doesn't overpower with sweetness. What did you do? Oh. Well. Okay. So now we've got to get our salad ready, which is... Pretty much everything. I'm just going to slice up some um, radishes. So I've got my, let's see, bell pepper, cucumber. This is like half my fridge right here. The romaine, radishes. And here I go. <laughs> I feel like Rachel there when she used to do her $40 uh, or her uh, 30 minute meals. And she carry everything from the pantry. That was me just now. Except it was from the fridge. Okay. My big, oh, did I use my big bowl? Yeah. Okay, we'll have to use another bowl. Ben said, Donna, we definitely got to be distant relatives. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Okay. I'm going to try to make the salad in this bowl and hope that it's large enough. But first, I'm going to slice the radishes. Does it say, where my I I'm going to put the recipe where I can see it. Salad. Oh, the two green onions. That's what I forgot. I knew I should have something, but they're right here. Okay, so two green onions. We'll do those first and get this out of there because that is brown. You don't want a brown, icky green onion. And the dressing, I'll put over here. Okay, here we go. 
Mark said he just subscribed to PTV. Oh, nice. Thanks, Mark. You won't regret it. They're awesome. So much fun. We laugh, and it's just lighthearted. And we talk about Christmas and Hallmark movies and cooking and crafting, and it's just a good time. And pine cones. And Doug saves pine cones. Yes, he does. Tune in to find what that find out what that's all about. Okay, there's my two green onions. Here's my salad that I pre-washed. That's why I put the clip on it. Dump it all in here. And I couldn't just get romaine for whatever reason. Our store's been really wonky lately, but it has a, like carrots in it and stuff. It's not traditional, but we're going with it today. You really just want the, the romaine. I asked for hearts of romaine. I still get my groceries delivered most of the time, so that's what they brought me. Hmm, what are you going to do? And I need five radishes. So I got these beautiful radishes, though. I'm going to slice five of them. Ben said he's looking forward to the more crop delivery segment tomorrow night. Me too. I can't wait to see what, what was in there this time. And again, I pre-washed and everything my um, radishes earlier just to save some time. And I'll take all the stems off and then I can just chop and not worry about it. But he's got, he has a surprise that Arnie, Doug, and Sherry don't know about. <gasps> oh, that's like must see. I'll be there. I cannot uh, wait. Oh, now I'm excited. We have a new apprentice chef member. Oh, Rosalie Dana. Rosalie, thank you so much. Welcome to the membership, and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And for those of you who don't know, you know, I don't do my channel for like numbers or how many subscribers or to make a bunch of super chats. That's not what I'm about. But when you do super chat or become a member, all of that goes back into my channel. Um, I actually lose money on my channel because I spend so much money on equipment and um, ingredients and all that stuff. But I do it because I love it. And I love visiting with you and I love showing you how to cook. And that's why I do it. And mostly for Give Kids the World too. Um, you know, I like to pay, pay it forward. So... I just wanted you to know I'm not like going like to the casino with it or anything like that. It all goes to ingredients, um, equipment, if I need like a new microphone or anything like that. But primarily ingredients. That's what the most expensive thing has been. Sebastian the Crab is here. Hey, Jeanette. Welcome in. And please never feel obligated to send me a dime. I don't want anyone to feel like that. Everyone is welcome. It's free to watch. That's why I do this. I want to show you guys how to cook and have fun. Michelle Williams said 53 days to go, Donna. Our October trip begins. That's exciting, Michelle. You must be so looking forward to that. Lots of fun to be had. Go, try to go through that. Okay. Don't try that at home. Going horizontal on your radish like that. That's not for a beginner. <laughs> you could cut your finger. <laughs> but I wanted uh, to get it as thin as I can. You don't want to have like a big bite of radish. Okay. And the radish gives it color. We didn't put radishes in this when I was growing up. This is a new thing I found. And um, the toasting of the bread was something that I brought to the table that my family didn't do. So, you know, it's one of those things where you just find a recipe and you make it your own. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, so we're done with the radishes, so I'll put the rest of these back in the fridge. There we go. Okay, now 
we're going to dump in our tomatoes that I have. There we go. We're going to dump in our bell pepper that I have. And I don't know if my mom's still in here, but mom, I think, we, didn't we put like regular onion and not green onion in ours? So I think that might be something different as well. But, you know, it's what it is. We make things our own. I think you'll like this though, mom. And the um, cucumber, again, I used an English cucumber and I just cut it up. And then I believe I need to do the um, parsley, right? Uh, cucumbers, it says to use Persian cucumbers, by the way, but my store doesn't have them. So I just use an English cucumber. Um, like I said, sometimes you gotta go with what you have around you as well and, and kind of substitute and play around with things. And, and like the recipe that we're using didn't say to put the za'atar on the um, croutons, but I really like it on there. So um, that was just my little twist on it. Um, radishes, green onions, oh, the parsley, that's it. Okay, so this is, that's cilantro, that's not parsley. I don't want that. Okay. There's the parsley. And then after this, we just have one more quick salad to make and um, two more tastings and we'll be done. Sparkle says she always gets hurt without onion. She'd much rather have green onion. Yeah, I think the green onion, um, from what I've read on it because i had never seen it but i thought oh that's interesting uh, it's more of a um, lebanese and i'm syrian so maybe that's like our like different countries where we're from parts of the middle east so that could be why but i'm going to put the salad over here so i can chop better i'm just gonna rough chop and then i would think because I remember too, um, Triple A Sparkles, that um, I always found like the regular white onion or yellow onion a little bit strong. And I think the green onion, when I saw that, I thought it was really unique. And um, more, it's a much more mild, but you get the onion flavor, which I think is pretty neat. And parsley is a, a big staple in Middle Eastern cooking. We use it in tabbouleh. We use it in our potato salad. We use it in a lot of things. Honora said, Syrian sister heart. <laughs> That's right. Trying to make my grandma proud. And if you get any big stems, like I got a couple of big stems, but you know, little pieces of stem is only going to add flavor. It's perfectly edible, perfectly fine, and it's yummy. You just don't want someone getting a big stem, and then they have to floss, you know. You don't want that. <laughs> and just keep chopping till you get it to where you want it. I'm about there. There you go. <clears throat> and Neil's gone crazy with the R. Johns emoji. He misses you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going in with the parsley now. Okay, and I'm going to have to wipe this board down one more time after we're done. But it is very user-friendly. I will say that. I love it a lot, Paul. And I can't thank you enough. I, I really enjoyed using them for sure. Um, okay, let's see. So we fried the pita bread. We made the dressing. We fried the pita bread. We combined all the stuff. Now we pour the dressing over and top it with the fried bread. And we'll be ready to eat. Okay, so I need my whisk, which is right here. I want to emulsify this one more time before we pour it. Okay. Now, see, the other thing, too, 
when I was growing up, and I don't know, Triple A Sparkles, if um, your family grew their own mint, but mine grew their own mint in their yard. So we always had fresh mint to dry and put in our salads. Um, now I, I need to, I want to start my arrow garden. Uh, Living the Magic was so kind, they get, gifted me a, um, an arrow garden. I've got to get it set up. I've been debating where to put it. But I want to make my own mint and basil and herbs so I don't have to rely on the store where, you know, it's like, it's not the same. Oh, this is a beautiful salad. Look at that, you guys. I don't understand. Siri doesn't understand, but we do. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? The radishes give it such beautiful color. And I'm, I'm guessing it's going to give it crunch, too, because, we, like I said, we never did in my Syrian um, background, at least in my family. So now we're just going to put the croutons in. And it, what it does is it's going to soak up all the, um, it's going to soak up all the dressing and everything, and it's going to taste like the salad, too, which is really awesome. So I'm going to toss all this in. Luckily, this was just big enough. <laughs> JDB said, Donna, mint is something squirrels don't like, so you might want to grow some. <laughs> yeah. True that. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to put this in a bowl, have Richard take a picture, then we'll try it. And then um, I think we'll use our new bowls. Then we can make our last salad, try the ambrosia that's cold. I don't know why this is giving me issues. I'm gonna eat lunch off of this all week. <laughs> It'll be great. A couple of radishes. There we go. That way they can see everything that's in it. I'll show everybody. Those croutons are what makes it. And it's funny because growing up, I never thought of it as a crouton, but that's essentially what it is. Right. So there you go. Pretty, pretty. Okay, you ready to try it? I'm ready. <clears throat> Wish Upon a Star 4 is here. Hi, Wish Upon a Star 4. Welcome in. Glad to have you here. So what a great summer salad. It looks so It's good. refreshing. It's so good. And my grandpa used to grow his own tomatoes. He had a huge garden. So everything that we see here, he would have grown himself, um, which would have made it even better. Make sure you get some of everything if you can. I'm going in for like several bites. Yeah, radish. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, he took it. That means it's a winner. Mmm. So good. Absolutely amazing. I love it. So, so good. Okay. So now our last salad is really simple. One of my favorite salads, uh, go-to salads. I made this recipe up myself. Um, I don't have it printed out, so I'm just going to go over it with you. And grab some ingredients. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> um, Neil said, Ginger the rabbit loves cilantro. I bet. <laughs> Richard, I need your help. I know we had strawberry vinaigrette dressing. Strawberry vinaigrette. And it's in here somewhere. 
If not, we'll have to use raspberry, but that's fine. It was, you remember, because we used it on the salad, we used it on something for the, um, the other stream. Is it not here? I don't see it either. Wait, is that it? No, that's hot sauce. I don't think it's there. It wouldn't be back there. Okay. I guess we don't have it. Okay. I thought we did. That's Caesar dressing. Nope. Okay. Okay. We don't have strawberry vinaigrette. Not to worry. We have raspberry vinaigrette. I have no idea what happened to the strawberry vinaigrette, but that's okay. All right. This salad is easy and delicious. And I need my gel board because we're going to be cutting some chicken, but it's cooked chicken. And what else did I need? Oh, the lettuce. That's right. All right. Let's see. I'm going to make this on a plate, I think. So... This is my um, chicken berry goat cheese salad. And we're gonna start with some um, baby spinach that I, of course, washed and dried in my salad spinner. So that's the base of the salad. It's supposed to have strawberry vinaigrette. Um, I looked, we had some, I don't know where it went, but it's gone now. But I have raspberry vinaigrette. So we're using raspberries, and it'll be fine. Okay. So there's that. I really wish I knew where that went because. Marianne that's... says, enjoying your yummy stream while having dinner. Vandal rim grilled oh. barbecue chicken, dinner out in the garden. Aw. Cucumbers and onions, green beans, and baked potatoes. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside now, but this is our base. And it's really simple. I wasn't breaking anything, which was just a plate. Um, <laughs> so now I have a grilled chicken blast that I made yesterday. And um, you can make it ahead of time. You can serve it warm if you want to and grill it the day of. Um, I'll show you what I used on that. Preston says, hi, Aunt Donna. Oh, Preston, I'm so glad to see you, Pete. Welcome in. Have you started school yet? Or does it not start yet there? They started Labor Day. Oh, Labor Day. Okay, so it's like when I grew up in New England. They did when I was. Okay, so this is what I put on the chicken. I put salt, pepper, and the citrus herb dress um, uh, seasoning. Sorry, not dressing. Seasoning that I got from Whole Foods Market. So that's that. So that's on the chicken. I just grilled it on my indoor grill. And now we're going to make it pretty and slice. Kathy H. says, can you fry goat cheese for on top? You could if you wanted to, for sure. I like to just um, put little medallions on mine. I didn't even taste this to see how it came out. Mmm, <clears throat> try that. Stephanie said that chicken looks delicious. Mm, it's really good. It is delicious. Mm -hmm. It is very delicious. Okay. So, chicken is sliced. I'm going to put the little extra that was there away. So I can 
make my salad. Alrighty, so here we go. Simple, simple, simple. And I, I washed the blueberries, like I said, in my salad spinner too, but I put them back in the container so that you can store them. And it has, you know, the little air holes, because if you put them in a lock them up, they don't have any ventilation. So just put how many, however many blueberries you would like. I like blueberries. I put a lot. And also by washing your um, produce beforehand, um, you can get like, you know how the blueberries have stems and stuff, or sometimes there's a bad blueberry? So you can deal with all of that. Okay. Put that away. And I'm going to need my little knife for the strawberries and the goat cheese. Now you can crumble the goat cheese. Or you could make little medallions. I think I'm going to make little medallions. But we're going to cut our strawberries. I'm going to do like three maybe. We'll see how we do here. And I know like Panera has a salad like this and Wendy's does too. And ours here charges like $12 for a salad. It's, it's, and some places charge like 20 for a takeout salad or a restaurant salad. It's absolutely ridiculous. I will not pay that. <laughs> it's like it's a salad. It's not filet mignon, people. So I think it's much easier. It's so simple. And, it, you know, if you're on a weeknight, you could do this like I just did and, you know, grow your chicken ahead of time. Mark said, don't eat those strawberry tops, are John. <laughs> You're right. Richard. That's a bowl right here. I know, but I said from the beginning that's the trash bowl. What are you, Forky? Okay, now we have straw. I like to get stuff when I have a salad, like, all over. I don't want to take a bite and not be having a blueberry or just get a strawberry. I want to get all the fruit. Like the perfect bite. I'm weird that way, I guess. Noreen said candy walnuts or pecans would be good on that salad. They would be really good. We're going to put some slivered almonds on ours. Okay. So next we're going to do the goat cheese. Or the shell, as they say in French. Is this going to peel open? I bet that's not going to do it for me. So I'll just have to go like this. Oh, this is going to be tough. I might need scissors. Okay. There we go. It's really creamy. So I'm just going to make some little medallions and put it on the salad. Because if I was to crumble it, it would probably make up a mess. <laughs> but you can get a uh, chev crumbled already. Yeah. Put that all around. <laughs> And I will say that this um, particular salad is keto friendly if you're counting your carbs or sugars. Berries are very healthy for you. I'll put one more in the middle. There we go. And wash my hands. Okay, now it's time. Oh, yeah. Joni C is headed out for dinner. She said thank you for the great new recipe. Oh, thank you for being here, Joni C. I appreciate you being here and taking time out of your day to join us, and I hope you like the recipes. Thank you so much, and enjoy your dinner. 
Okay, so this is cooked chicken, so it's okay to touch, of course. So I'm just going to do it like we did with the steak and just... Mark said, all the cheese puns are rising to the surface of my brain, but I'm trying to be good. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we have extra chicken. You Theoretically, if I wasn't going to take a picture, I, I would probably put it in a bigger bowl and toss everything, but, you know. I'm trying to get it so you can see a little bit of everything. And then we're just going to sprinkle our almonds that give it some crunch. And again, almonds are healthy for you. You don't want to eat like a ton of them, but in moderation, because they do have fats in them, but they are good, healthy fats that lower your cholesterol and don't make it feel high. So. Okay. There's our salad, guys. I'm just going to put the dressing on it and have Richard take a um, picture. There you go, see? And I've got this Skinny Girl sugar-free um, raspberry vinaigrette, which is excellent. I love all the Skinny Girl dressing. I keep them all in my fridge. So I'm gonna... Looks better than the one from Panera. I know. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to have Richard take a picture, then we'll taste it. Then we'll taste the rest of our stuff, and then we'll be done for the night. Now that is a $12 salad. <laughs> get a fork, I'll get a knife. a piece of chicken. There we go. We're going to have to do what we did with the patouche and take little bites of everything because our mouths aren't that big. One piece of this. And blueberry. And almond. Mmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I made this one up, guys. This is my recipe. But it's so simple. You can switch out the nuts for no nuts or any kind of nut you want. You could toast the nuts. You can put different berries, different fruits. Make it your own. It's so good. Um, the nuts do give it crunch, but you could use croutons instead. You could use the toasted pita bread if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, there it is. Berry chicken, grilled chicken, berry salad with goat cheese, almonds, and, well, today, raspberry vinaigrette. <laughs> okay. So, Richard, we have but two things left to taste and plate. We'll do that real quick. He'd love the ambrosia. Okay. I'm just going to get a little bowl to put these in. This is almost like a pickle, wouldn't you say? It's like pickle. Mm -hmm. So you take a picture of that. Okay, there we go. Now I just want to show you guys, show them how thin, look how thin I got, I got the, you can barely see it. That's how thin I got it hand slicing. I'm good. Mm -hmm. So good. And crispy, crunchy. That's what doing that step of salting it and letting all the liquid drain out because that's what keeps it crispy. If you don't, it makes a soggy, mushy um, pickle or salad or cucumber. Yum. Okay.
So that's a winner. Now, I will say I probably I might put a touch more sugar in that. Don't you think it would balance it out? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit more. I think a little bit more sugar. I will put some of this in a bowl. This beautiful ambrosia salad. And I'll show you guys. See it set up. That looks really good. Okay. We'll need two spoons. So. Complete it in here. Oh, look at that. That's going to make a great picture. Rich is like, I just want to eat it. Maybe we'll do right from the top. There you go. Love it. Okay, guys, so we've plated it up. There it goes. That's our last thing. Go big and go home. I'm going to get a little bit of everything on the cherry. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Really good. Mm-hmm. It's even better once it's cold and set up. The pudding gives it a better consistency than just making regular ambrosia salad. But, yeah, and it's pretty. Really pretty. So tasty. So, yeah, there you have it. Summer salads in the books. We made, let's see. What all did we make? We made the sweet potato salad. We made the steak with the peaches. We made uh, the chicken salad with the berries and the goat cheese. We made fatouche. We made ambrosia. We made the garlic um, ginger uh, pickles or the cucumber salad. Um, it was amazing. We made six salads. Wow. Yeah, we did great. And everything was really delicious. I would make it all again. Um, the only thing I would do a little differently is add a hint more sugar, maybe double the sugar. It said one teaspoon. I'm thinking it needed two. Don't you think, Richard, in the in the ginger uh, yeah. garlic pickles or cucumber salad? So, yeah, but other than that, everything was a 10 out of 10 for me. How about you? Definitely. He says definitely. Ben so, said he's hungry. <laughs> I bet. I wish you lived closer. I'd say come on over because we're going to have leftovers <laughs> and you'd have lunch for the whole week. It'd be great. But anyhow, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for sticking around for over three hours in the chat with me and watching. I appreciate every single one of you. You fill my heart so much with joy when I see you in the chat and Richard says you're here. It just makes me so happy. And Siri, knock it off. <laughs> um, but seriously, thank you to everyone who became a channel member today. That really helps the channel a lot. It helps me a lot so I can buy ingredients to put this show on. Thank you to everyone who super chatted. You so don't have to do that. Um, totally unnecessary, but so appreciated. It means a lot, and it does help out, um, especially with ingredients going up and everything. But, yeah, but I'm not going to stop. I'll always do this for you guys because you're. I love seeing you every other week, and I love doing stuff uh, to, you know, help give kids the world, and I just love doing it. So, but thank you all for being here and for taking time out of your Sunday when there's a plethora of things to watch on TV and YouTube, and you stuck with me. So thank you. That means so much. I really appreciate it. Anyhow, we're going to... Call this one done, right? right? We have some cleanup to do and some stuff to put away. So um, we're going to let you guys go. But I hope you have a wonderful uh, two weeks. And in two weeks, we will from today, we will be doing our Lilo and Stitch uh, themed show. Um, and it's, I believe, their 20th or 25th, I think it's the 20th anniversary. 20th anniversary, that's right, because I remember when I saw it with Sam in the movie theater. It's one of my favorite movies, and we're going to have a Hawaiian feast. It's going to be amazing. So be there for that. That's in two weeks from today, same time, 4 p.m. Eastern time on this channel. 
and uh, make sure you have your notification bell hit to all so you know when I'm going live or if I release a vlog or anything. And uh, make sure you're subscribed if you like your, my content. Um, but until two weeks from today, I will see you all later. And Sam is going live tomorrow night at 8 o'clock from um, Epcot. She's going to be showing the Air Supply concert. It will be a lot of fun, so don't miss that. Uh, Pepper Tree Villa is on tomorrow night at 9.30 for crafting, cooking, see what Sherry bought, see what Ben bought, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So until next time, I love you all. Be kind to each other. Put good out into the world. And I believe if we all do that, the world will be such a better place. So until then, love you guys. Bye. Bye.